This Canucks player is exceeding expectations, and another Canucks rookie is tearing up the juniors. I'll get into this later on in this episode. Before I start, I just want to say to thousands of you watching that aren't subscribed, if you're enjoying this daily Canucks news and you want to stay up to date with the Canucks and the news we drop every day, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button because we're going to be here all season long giving you updates around the Canucks. Well, that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which is Connor Garland has been outstanding. Now, when you do look at this by Jeff Patterson on Twitter, he did say Connor Garland is now tied for third with Brock Besser for the Canucks goal since January 1st. Solo third in even strength goals, doing it while averaging 14 minutes and 51 seconds of ice time per game. And like I said, when you look at this, Elias Patterson, 34 games played, 20 goals. JT Miller, 34 games played, 18 goals. Garland, 12 goals. And then Besser, 12 goals in 34 games. This guy has been completely outstanding since we started the season. There was so many rumors flying around that Connor Garland might be on the way out, the Canucks might be shopping him, that he might have requested a trade, but since then, this guy has been nothing but outstanding for the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, when you look at Connor Garland in his three years with the Canucks, in 2021-2022, in, in 77 games, he has 19 goals, 33 assists for 52 points. Last season, in 23 in 81 games, he has 17 goals and 29 assists for 46 points. And just this season, in 2023-2024, in 70 games played, he has 15 goals, 19 assists, and 34 points. This is looking like this might be his most productive goal-producing season. As I said, 19 goals in 77 games, 17 goals in 81, and now 15 goals in just 70 games played with the Canucks this season. He has been outstanding, and a huge part of this is not only is he stationed on the first line right now, but he was also a part of the third line that was one of the league's best. Like I said, Connor Garland is playing in the top six, and not only the top six, but he is playing on the top line. Hoaglander, Pedersen, and Garland are stationed there, but this also leads me into the fact of how good that third line was before Dakota Joshua got hurt. Now, when you do look at this as a goal percentage, this is just pretty much showing you the best producing lines in the NHL this season. The top line, you've seen Ryan Hart, uh, and Rodriguez, you see Barkov with them as well. Marchman, Sagan, Duchesne, and right at number three, you see Dakota Joshua, Teddy Bluger, and Connor Garland. This is one of the best producing lines in the NHL, and there's a reason for this. They looked absolutely unstoppable when this was a trio playing the third line, and this is why not only were they one of the best third lines in the league, they were the best, and they were one of the best lines in an entire National Hockey League. Like I said, the stats show it here with the goal percentage. They were just everything they were doing offensively, defensively, forechecking, anything you asked for, this line got it done. And I think once Dakota Joshua comes back, it's going to be Garland's line to slide down to the third and run this trio again. Like I said, right now he is playing the top line with Hoaglander, Pedersen. But after that, I could see this third line once again just kind of getting back together of Dakota Joshua, Teddy Bluger, and then once again, Connor Garland. This will give you the uh, possibility to move a guy like Lindholm back up into the top six. You have a guy like Mikheyev that could slide down to the fourth line. You have so much to work with, and with little time left before the playoffs, the Canucks could reunite the lotto line and this third line going back into start game one of the Stanley Cup Finals. So what's your thoughts on Connor Garland? Has he been a pleasant surprise for everyone? Are you happy he ended up staying with the team? And which line would you like to see him on the most? Do you like him on this top line? Would you rather maybe move down to the second line with a guy like JT Miller? Or do you want to see this third line reunited once Dakota Joshua is back in the lineup? Now, talking about lineup and just kind of talking about players, there's a Canucks player that's been on a tear, and Josh Bloom extends his streak. Now, Josh Bloom collects his third point, one goal, second assist, uh, to extend his point streak to 10 games, which was 17 points in that 10-game span in the OHL. He's up to 35 points, 16 goals, 19 assists, and 32 games since returning to the OHL. Now, Josh Bloom is a name that a lot of people might not know, and I'm going to break him down for you guys. Josh Bloom is 20 years old from Canada. I know a lot of you guys are sick of me talking about the European or just American prospects, so we do have a Canadian boy. 
He's a left wing, six foot two, 183 pounds, left-handed shot. He was drafted by the Buffalo Savers in 2021, and he was a third-round pick, 95th overall. But he is a part of the Canucks organization now. Now, like I said, this guy is a guy that might a lot of people might not really know, and he is someone that you should know. He did start the season with the Absurd Canucks. In 14 games, he only had one assist. He was a minus five. He didn't look great to start the year in the AHL. He did end up going down to the ECHL, and in eight games, he had two assists, once again, a minus three. Not the best showing from a guy, but then you see him return to the AHL, and once he got rolling in the OHL story, he started to get his confidence back. In 32 games, he has 16 goals, 19 assists for 35 points, 15 penalty minutes, and a plus 14 on the season. He is projected in the next two games, put up two more points, to finish with a total of 37 points and a plus 15. Like I said, this guy is only 20 years old, and you might be asking, hey, he was drafted by the Buffalo Sabres. How did the Canucks end up getting him? So when you do look at this, he was acquired from the Buffalo Sabres in a trade. And this was from February 27th, 2023. Vancouver Canucks general manager Patrick Alvin announced today, and this by today, I mean February 27th, 2023, the club has acquired left-wing prospect Josh Bloom from the uh, Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Riley Stillman. So this was how the Canucks end up getting him. This is how he's been performing. He has been putting up amazing numbers. And like I said, yes, he did struggle a tiny bit to start his career in the AHL. He didn't look outstanding. He got demoted to the ECHL and ultimately went back to the OHL. But like I said, the big thing with this is he's up to a 10-game point streak. He has his confidence back. He has been producing. 17 points in 10 games is no joke. One goal, two assists, and his last game. And like I said, the total of 16 goals and 19 assists in 32 games and he's projected to continue on and it seems like he will make the absurd canucks out of training camp again next year and he does have a bit of value this is a guy that was a third round pick he was drafted for a reason and the canucks seen something in him and that's why they ultimately did trade for him like i said 35 points in 32 games he got off to a slow start not only in the ahl echl but also the ohl but he has his confidence back if he continues on to dominate in the OHL, he continues his streak, and this carries into training camp. It's just kind of an open door for this guy where he wants to make Abtur again and just show his value. This is a guy that's going to be fighting to get on the Canucks roster. Do I think he makes it next year? Most likely not. But this seems like a guy that should be a regular in Abtur's Canucks lineup next season and ultimately in the next two to three years fight to try to get a bottom six or middle six spot on this Canucks team. So what's your guys' thoughts on Josh Bloom? Are you excited for him? Are you going to be watching any OHL games just to kind of get some glimpses of this guy? Have you watched any of his games when he did play in Abbotsford or maybe in the ECHL, ECHL as well? And what other prospects are you looking forward to me covering? And just let me know down in the comments. But speaking of comments, let's get into everyone's favorite topic today, which is comments of the day. And the comment of the day today comes from Callum. He said, Mark, jumped in the lock jump into the Lockdown Canucks podcast or the Kempner Canucks podcast to grow your following, dude. And I've been seeing this comment uh, quite a bit, honestly. I know you guys love both these channels so much. So if you want to see me collab with either of these guys, just let them know in their comment section, maybe tag them in this, or I'll reach out to them as well. Because I'd love to kind of just expand the fan base, just bring all the fans together, watch all your favorite guys, just all on one stream. Maybe they can hop on with me. Maybe I'll hop on one of their podcasts. Who knows? I would just love to collab with other guys because we all love the Canucks. And the best thing about that is we can all talk about the Canucks together. So while you're down in the comments, uh, like I said, tag anyone you want me to uh, be on their podcast or maybe you want them on this. While you're down there, you could be uh, just featured on the next episode, a uh, comment of the day. And other than that, I hope you enjoy this episode. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, like I said, and take care.